next on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time, TNA Wrestling has a new owner. There's a brand new Intercontinental Champion over on SmackDown. News on the WWE Hall of Fame. And it's 2017. It's a new year and a new look for the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time, which starts right now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time here on Fight TV, F I T E, and of course, YouTube and PWRShow.com. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Octavius the Tiberius, the alleged backyard, one time, knockout, straight edge, hardcore, anthem hero. It is an anthem. I thought you changed your name to David Anthem Hero. What? Didn't I read that and no, I saw no, that no. earlier tonight? You didn't see that, but it wasn't me. Oh! Like uh, uh, Shaggy? It yes. wasn't you? It wasn't me. It was you in the corner, though, I think. And in the Burger King bathroom. Different song, I know, but I think that was still you. <laughs> yes, because of course I would involve a Whopper. <laughs> I think it was more like a junior Whopper, actually, oh, before they discontinued it, yes. Okay. <laughs> Folks, it is the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. It is 2017, and it is time for our big story. And a big one, as we talked about last week right here on Primetime, that the announcement was forthcoming. The announcement has now been made. Just as of yesterday, actually earlier today, brand new ownership for TNA Impact Wrestling as Anthem Sports and Entertainment, the company that bailed the company, bailed TNA out after their October lawsuit situation with Billy Corgan has now announced that they have taken majority ownership of the company and they are in charge. Specifically, the executive vice president of uh, Anthem Sports and Entertainment, Ed Nordholm, is TNA's managing director and he will oversee all major decisions. Now that replaces somebody else who for the last 12 plus years has overseen all the major decisions in TNA Impact Wrestling. And her name is Dixie Carter, ladies and gentlemen. Dixie Carter has resigned from her position as chairman of Impact Ventures, which was the former, still current, parent company of Impact Wrestling. So many names uh, so as many. far as TNA goes. But she has resigned as chairman, and she will join the advisory board of the Fight Media Group. Now, Anthem Sports and Entertainment controls and, and runs the Fight Network, that's F-I-G-H-T, up in Canada where TNA airs its broadcasting. She is going to be uh, on the advisory board for that where her focus will be on the global growth of the combat sports-related brands owned by Anthem. No direct involvement in the day-to-day -day activities no, of TNA Impact not. Wrestling for Dixie Carter. This is huge. A new majority owner of TNA Impact Wrestling earlier tonight. We saw the new era of Impact Wrestling. We talked a little bit about Ethan Carter, now being Ethan Anthem. Anthem. And uh, <laughs> well, we'll get to the other people who we may not have seen on television who are back and involved with TNA Impact Wrestling. But David Hero, this news that Anthem is now in charge officially and Dixie Carter is no longer. It's now gonna finally be run like a business. Because a business owns it. It's a not, business owns it, they've invested in it as well. A, it's not a vanity project, it's not about promoting a Twitter handle or action figures. It's about making money. It's about return on investment. And now the fight people in Canada, Anthem, I mean, they're gonna open up the coffers, they're gonna bring in some new talents, they're gonna upgrade a whole bunch of stuff, and it's gonna be a very interesting next eight to 10 days down in Orlando. It will be, an, uh, as you say that, because TNA is taping their programming through the end of March, yes. through the next several days in Orlando, Florida. Not anything huge expected to happen over, especially this net first couple of weeks. However, the slow burn is probably the better way to go about this this time. It's, you know what, I, it's great for the talent because obviously Anthem has money behind them. Oh yeah. People will be paid on time. That's always oh, been a big thing. Oh, what a feeling. You know? So it's, it, it's going to be it's gonna be great. I'm sure that the morale, I mean, I, I spoke to some of the guys down there today, and the morale was good. People were excited about a new uh, direction for the company. Ding dong. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Very interesting. Well, it gets more interesting, folks, because we have found out through an official announcement from himself that Jeff Jarrett is back working as an advisor to TNA Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling Ventures, Anthem Sports and Entertainment, Jeff Jarrett, back in after 
what was it, 2014 or so, two years ago? Feels like longer than that, that he was pushed out of the company by Dixie Carter. Jeff has his baby back. Yes, yes he does. You know, <laughs> and, and he is going, it's going to be interesting because it's a new guard there also since Absolutely. he was there last. Yeah. All of his confidants are gone, but he is bringing in Dutch Mantel. Dutch Mantel, which is back, one of his guys. Rolling around backstage. Zeb Coulter. As a, a part of the creative team. Because keep in mind, they lost Billy Corgan, who was part of the creative team, and mm -hmm. Dave Lagana, who was on the Ross Report last week, by the way, um, also left the company. So they had a void in creative. And, and, and Zeb Coulter, Dutch Mantel. Dirty Dutch Mantel. He's a great mind. He has a great mind. Many would say one of the best minds in the wrestling yes. business currently. And him and Jeff are going to, you know, um, they're going to shake it up down there. They really are. I mean, as we saw, Hornswoggle. No, Swoggle. Swoggle. I don't want another letter coming at us. We'll just say... Swoggle versus the endorsed rock star Spud. Amazing. Yes. You know? Yes. I mean, they are of similar size and stature, so it's a, it's a, it's a bit of an a understandable matchup. But, I mean, you know, they're going to... Oh, you don't like that either? No, 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 I do. They're going to bring in other... Faces. Well, we saw Swaggle as part of the total nonstop deletion. Yes. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I mean, just where Spud was defeated, by the way, by Maxwell Hardy, mm -hmm. by a two-year-old. I believe that to be the case. <clears throat> Brutal. God bless you, Spud. Um, but yeah, it, it's TNA. I mean, how many times have we said this though? It's another reboot, another reset. This one's different. But this what one never is completely happened. Completely different. What never happened. There's been a change of the guard. Exactly. Dixie Carter was always in charge. That's the difference. She's not anymore. No, she's not. And uh, Love her, hate her, whatever. I mean, uh, she was the constant. And throughout all the successes and the many more failures of the company. So now, with a business company, as you say, not a vanity project behind mm -hmm. them in Anthem Sports and Entertainment, Jeff Jarrett back with the company, Dirty Dutch Mantel back with the company, perhaps Alberto Del Rio, Del Patron, whatever he calls himself, if he were to come to TNA. Mm -hmm. Perhaps him back with the company as well. This there, could be good times for what has already been a great television product on Pop TV from yeah, TNA Impact yes, Wrestling. And it's going to get better. It's going to be more defined. It's going to make more sense. Uh, I think creative is going to be more. My only concern. Here we go. Is that as much as I love the Hardys, that Matt and Jeff are going to take up too much TV time. Okay, mm -hmm. because are we building a new TNA Impact wrestling brand or are we deleting every week? Well, uh, I think we need to better evaluate whether we should be deleting or not, and they can't because any time that show has happened, it's been up against non-normal Impact competition, meaning the week before or week after it was a best of show or something else like that. So while it did good and did okay in the ratings, I'm not sure the buzz. I mean, you can't quantify the buzz though. I think they do need to find a good balance of the two things, folks, ladies and gentlemen. That is TNA. Impact Wrestling is born again under the Anthem Sports and Entertainment brand. And that is this week's big story. Coming up on Primetime, this week's Raw Report, SmackDown Report, Hot News, and Three Count. All that and more when Primetime returns. The biggest party event of WrestleMania weekend is back. WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash presents Shenanigans Orlando. Join Nash and his friends for a huge VIP party Saturday, April 1st. Party with the biggest stars of wrestling at the pub at Point Orlando on International Drive to kick off WrestleMania weekend. Don't miss Shenanigans Orlando hosted by Kevin Nash. Tickets are available now and going fast at PWRshow.com. That's PWRshow.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time here at Casablanca on Brady on January 5, 2017. David, how was your New Year? Did you celebrate here I, at Casablanca for the Masquerade Ball? I was all over the place. I hear they I took did. your mask away. They did. What about your dress? I didn't wear a dress. Well, you were dressed, weren't you? Yes, but I didn't wear a dress. But they took dress. your dress away. It what was, you were dressed in? No, that was somebody else. Okay. That was Ron Sykowski. Oh, he was kicked out before the party ever started. That's what happened. Indeed, indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. It was a good time here at Casablanca on Brady for New Year's Eve 2016. Uh, 2017, right? Wait, New Year's Eve 2016, New Year's 2017. Yes. 
It was a long night. It was a long night. But folks, uh, let's get right to this week's WWE Raw Report. Of course, brought to you by our good friends at Fight TV. That's F-I-T-E Fight, which is the app where you can get all kinds of incredible wrestling programming, including TNA's one night only pay-per-view occurring tonight, or tomorrow night, rather, on Fight TV. F-I-T-E Fight. You can actually go to F-I-T-E Fight dot tv fight dot tv slash pwr so following me david fight yeah, tv yeah. slash well, fight dot tv slash pwr fight tv wait fight dot tv slash pwr to go ahead and download the app right from the website and watch all the great content and programming on there including ring of honor wrestling and the pro wrestling report which is available for free of charge on a weekly basis on fight F I T E uh, dot TV sure slash P W R. You know what's also available now on that app as of this week? DDP Yoga Day. Yes, how about that? I've d I've been doing some DDP. You have actually. Yes. You, you 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 look okay. I mean, uh, there was you lost some weight, I think, though, because of the stress of that wrestling contest that you had back in December. I did uh, yeah, going yeah, yeah. into it, but uh, it's making me very stretchy. DDP Yoga also uh, responsible for the uh, renewed look of one Mick Foley. Yes, except for the haircut. I mean, well, he shaved. I, I wish Mick. I wish Dallas would have given him a better haircut. Mick Foley, the GM, or what is he? The commissioner, GM, owner? Who cares? He's the commissioner of Raw, and it is this week's Raw report. So let's start the clock on this segment and talk about the big news that came out of Raw this past Monday night. And David Hero, the biggest thing, of course, was the return of Goldberg, who was a guest on the first ever edition of the Kevin Owens Show. Was there ever a time when? The champ didn't look as big of a star as the guest on the show. You, when you refer to the champ, you're talking about Kevin Owens. Yes. He did not look, well, comparatively speaking, they are from two entirely different eras, two entirely different times, two entirely different looks, two entirely different stars. Yes, you're right. Interesting, isn't it? It was interesting. Goldberg looked like, who tells the story? I think it's Jim Cornette or maybe Jim Ross about, uh, maybe it's Kenny Starmaker Boland, I don't know. Uh, who talks about that they had tuned into uh, a SmackDown or a Raw, I believe it was Raw at one point, where in the ring were The Rock, John Cena, maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Miz. And the question was, who's this young boy in the ring with these two wrestlers? Because comparatively speaking, it's a huge difference when they're side by side. It's, it, it, it's a huge difference, cosmetically and everything. I mean go back to the Attitude Era. And Kevin Owens has had a, an amazing year. Yeah, he's, you know, a, he's a great man to be champion. He's a great talent, but you just look <laughs> at it and it's like, wow, well, it's, it's a big difference. What did you think of Goldberg's return to Raw? I thought, it, you know, he... Did he do what he needed to do? Paul Heyman coming out saying, my client Brock Lesnar is not here tonight. I think so. I mean, Goldberg is there because he hasn't been on TV, you know? Mm -hmm. Pop a rating, try to yeah. help the ratings. Well, they've got to sell 60,000 plus sell tickets 60, for the 000. Alamo Dome. Yeah. All right, well, also Sami Zayn, the endorsed Sami Zayn, ladies and gentlemen, took it in a last man standing match to Braun Strowman. Oh, now, he didn't leave not. on his own two feet, he but he survived. He nothing to Braun Strowman. Did you watch the match? Yes. Or did you dream about what you thought the no, match would be Braun because you're in love with Braun Strowman? Him. He did, but who lasted? Not only did he last 10 minutes at Roadblock, but he lasted in this last man standing match. They were all over in the back, they were on the stage, they were everywhere, and Sami Zayn lasted with a black eye. He wrestled injured. Who won? Braun Strowman. That's all that matters. No, at the end of the he day, I, not, I keep getting told wins and losses and titles don't matter. That's what you keep but saying in right now. This man program. standing match, it does. He couldn't get into the ten count. Did you expect Sami Zayn to last that long? And if so, if not, whatever, should he have? He shouldn't have. There we go. Just like he shouldn't have before. How about the New Day's refusal of the uh, pursuance of joining their club by Titus O'Neil? <laughs> should he have been allowed in? No, he that, doesn't fit. How? Are you sure? Yeah. Why doesn't he fit? Because he was acquitted? No, I mean, he, he doesn't have the same charisma as the new day. He doesn't play a musical instrument. Maybe he doesn't dance. He, he dances. We saw him dance with the primetime players, did yeah, the Carlton thing. Yeah. I mean, I would rather see, uh, God, who would I rather see with them? New Day's fine. I mean, they, they don't need, need a fourth. They don't. They absolutely don't need a fourth. No. Uh, but how about Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens again going at it, and again Roman Reigns getting the best of the champion? He's beaten the world champion how many times? What does that mean for the Royal Rumble, David Hero? 
Have they announced a match between the two? They have, because Chris Jericho's in the Shark Tank. Yes. So what does it mean for the Rumble, seeing Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, Raw after Raw after Raw after Raw? You gotta believe Kevin Owens is gonna go over at the Rumble. <sighs> now we've said Here's it is why. clear. Here's why. Because you have to establish him as a credible champion. Yeah. So if Jericho's in the Shark Tank, or in the Shark Cage, Owens has to beat him. Here's the thing though, we have said clearly and distinctly, and we agree on this one subject. There is no doubt that AJ Styles will walk into the Camping World Field Outdoor World Stadium, whatever it's called in Orlando, Florida, as the WWE World Heavyweight Ch Wrestling Champion. Is that same doubt missing from whether or not Kevin Owens will do the same? Because I don't feel it. You know, there's a chance Cena can win at the Rumble. But he's going, oh, against AJ? Yeah. Shut your mouth. Where are you coming from? I can see it. Mm. He'll get it back at Fastlane, will AJ? No, he won't. Here in Milwaukee. See the Bradley Center. Yeah, you can't be dropping bombs like that when we got no time left. Well, I'm just saying. Here in this segment. And wait, that's a SmackDown topic anyway. So maybe we'll talk about that. Well, you brought we'll up get AJ Styles. I brought up AJ Styles in relation to Kevin Owens as to whether or not Kevin Owens would make it as far as AJ Styles in wow, WrestleMania with the are champion. you so backpedaling right now. I'm clearly moving forward. I mean, time is advancing okay. forward, All so right, how am I backpedaling? Carry on. <clears throat> Thank you, Julian. Uh, overall thoughts on Raw this past Monday night? I enjoyed Raw. I love Braun Strowman. That's rare. Did you I, make it through all three hours and 15 minutes of Raw? No, I did not. You watched the Hulu version? No. Uh, it's better to do. I mean, you I have time. You know what I liked? I liked the, the stare down between Goldberg and Reigns. Mm -hmm. And I liked how Braun Strowman got in there. I don't like how they killed him with the double spear. Yeah. But it's showing both guys have the spear, so they may face to face, head to head, belly to belly, bumper to bumper. Back to back? At, at the Rumble. Folks, that is this week's WWE Raw Report. Coming up on Prime Time, this week's SmackDown Report, Hot News, Three Count, and DHHS. All that and much more when Prime Time returns. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report. Prime time here from Casablanca on Brady in the Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on a very, very cold night, David Earl. It's, it's three degrees out right it's now. It's frigid. It is frigid. It, 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 it. Uh, yeah. You're still shivering a little bit, yeah, huh? Yeah, it's cold. It man. is time for this week's WWE SmackDown report. And SmackDown, the big news coming out of it is a brand new intercontinental champion, ladies and gentlemen, Dean Ambrose in the main event with The Miz. Pins him, one, two, three. Maurice, shenanigans, of course. Pins him, though, one, two, three. I, for one, was surprised that the endorsed Miz would lose the championship to Ambrose because Miz is on such a roll. He was, and he got caught up in the Ambrose Asylum. I was surprised, too. I would have liked to have seen the Miz go over. I watched the match. Good match. They gave him a good 25, 30 minutes for this matchup. Um, and towards the end, I said, ah, there's no way. Come on. I mean, there's no reason for Miz to lose the championship. For him, the championship is, a, is not a prop, but it is a prop, yes. meaning it's a prop that helps him because he needs that glimmer, if you will, on his shoulder between he and his wife, Maurice. Without it, I, <sighs> Miz loses a step, but he'll now be chasing after Ambrose for that championship. But I thought towards the end of the matchup, I said, God, man, you know what? The ratings battle that they've That's now talked about. Yep. They got to do something on SmackDown this week to get at least close to where they were the previous and week when they, they beat had Raw in the ratings. Miz and Ambrose in the main event to close the show. They did, yes. Not AJ and Cena. Not at all. But AJ and Cena did do the contract signing, yes, which I did. thought AJ did a phenomenal job in that segment, by the way. Sort of Barry As did Corbin. Daniel Bryan. That's your guy. That's your guy. Interesting question tomorrow night on Feedback Friday about um, some p potential similarities between Baron Corbin and Braun Strowman. We'll get to those tomorrow okay. on Feedback Friday sure. here on Fight TV and also at PWRShow.com. How long will this go between Ambrose and The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship? Is it clear that we're going to see a rematch at the Royal Rumble, or will it be sooner? Definitely Rumble. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they could stretch this out all the way to Mania. They could. And 
that'd be a great story to because tell. Because all you have is fast lane. You've got the Renee Young piece. You've got real personal, real life drama in this, yep. which is what makes any wrestling angle great. The Miz really married to Maurice. Renee Young really sleeping with De Dean Ambrose. Oh, they're dating. Come the Miz on. said sleeping with, so I wanted okay. to keep it in context mm -hmm. with uh, what he said on television. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they could make it to the Rumble. Keeps it real. And I could, and I would not be upset with Rumble that. or Mania? Mania. Mania. Yeah. I think it could go, it could, it could be a good spot for both men. Uh, also, though, one person who we've talked about for the last few weeks who has sort of been um, swimming in the pool of obscurity while in the spotlight has been Dolph Ziggler, and he apparently has had it himself as he appeared to turn heel, bad guy, if you will, last week on SmackDown. He went all Trump, didn't he? I'm sorry? Beat up Kalisto. It's pretty messed up. Well, I mean, he, Ziggler built a wall. Kalisto went there to help him out, and he got super kicked. Got super kicked. And just so that the icing was on the heel cake, he also attacked Apollo Crews in the back yes, when they did. were questioning him, and thank why, God. why Ziggler, why? Damn you to hell, Ziggler. Why, Ziggler, I'm just why? glad that they're going to finally use Apollo Crews. I need points out of him. <laughs> in the PWR fantasy draft that you do. He's nothing. Knew. Um, Ziggler as a face, it's been, I think we both agree, somewhat obnoxious over the last few months yes. of the last chance, He's last chance, heel. last chance. He's a better heel. And now he can be a heel. Yes. And it's probably a good refreshing change for the arrogant Ziggler on the SmackDown Absolutely. brand. Absolutely. And him and Apollo Crews should have some pretty solid matches. That they should. Both now, very athletic guys. Now back to uh, something you talked about in the last segment, David Hero, a little tease, a little hint if you gave yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. said that you think there is a chance, or you would not be surprised if John Cena walked out of the Royal Rumble, the new WWE World Champion defeating AJ Styles. Now we both said time and time again on this program that AJ Styles is gonna roll right on into Central Florida in Orlando as the champion and defend that title at WrestleMania. Now whether he loses it or not to Cena before then, he could still be in that matchup, but now you change your thoughts as far as whether or not well, he is going I, to be champion I going into Orlando. I just can't see AJ beating Cena two or three times in a row. They made a point to say that AJ has beat Cena twice already on SmackDown yeah. this past Tuesday. You know what I mean? They put it back in our heads. Yeah, so it's like, and if you're really gonna go with Cena and Taker at Mania, you gotta give Cena a little bit of steam. Why, he's John Cena. He still needs something. Because if he can't beat AJ Styles, how can he beat The Undertaker? It's the Royal Rumble though, they're not the main event. The Royal Rumble is the main event. The I match understand. will be forgotten about by the time the end of the show, no, unless no, no, no. Batista's involved. No, that match will be great. Cena and Styles Oh, it'll be, will be great, great, absolutely. But at the end of the show, people will not be leaving with John Cena having not beat AJ. They'll be leaving with the winner of the Royal Rumble and I'm the hoping, sign and the I'm pyro. I'm hoping after the Rumble we find our buddy we saw um, in Orlando last year. The one who had some issues with Triple H? Yes. One of the greatest promos of all time. <laughs> It was, uh, it was, it was, it was interesting. Yeah, Junkyard sure. Dog as his first and second favorite guys, yes. and Triple H was <laughs> number one them. and two. Triple yeah. H was his, uh, uh -huh. his brother, I guess you could say, something like that. Yeah, no ER, but just an A. Yeah. Uh, overall thoughts on SmackDown this past Tuesday night on the USA Network. Maybe. I, I liked it. They keep it fresh. They keep it interesting. Show of shows. I, I, it is. It's the best show of the two. That is this week's oh, WWE. Wait, wait. How good was Cena? He was great. Cena's Him great. and Styles were he's, great. He's been fantastic. Okay, you had, you had the heel turn with Ziggler, you had Ambrose defeating The Miz, and you had more Baron Corbin. Mm-hmm. Can't beat that. That's this week's WWE SmackDown report. Coming up next on Primetime, it's this week's Event Center, Hot News, Three Count, and DHHS. All that and much more when Primetime returns. The biggest party event of WrestleMania weekend is back. WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash presents Shenanigans Orlando. Join Nash and his friends for a huge VIP party Saturday, April 1st. Party with the biggest stars of wrestling at the pub at Point Orlando on International Drive to kick off WrestleMania weekend. Don't miss Shenanigans Orlando hosted by Kevin Nash. Tickets are available now and going fast at PWRshow.com. That's PWRshow.com. I'm Linda Kay, and welcome to the PWR Event Center. WWE Fastlane comes to Milwaukee March 5th. Tickets available at Ticketmaster.com. The Shenanigans VIP party hosted by Kevin Nash comes to Orlando April 1st. Tickets available at PWRshow.com. Ring of Honor Wrestling comes to Milwaukee at Turner Hall April 28th. Tickets available at PatsTheater.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. David, this show is 
flying on by. You like that that, that slick new look that the uh, I do. Linda and her it's, team it's, came it's, up with. You know, very... she's in charge of the the. She's head of the graphics department, GFX. Nice. Yeah. It's a nice silky smooth presentation. Well, as is Linda. Yeah. I've seen a lot of her tonight, which is great. Yes, we have. Uh, anyways, it is time for hot news, ladies and gentlemen, here on Primetime. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero and Alberto Del Rio, who we talked about earlier as a possible person who is uh, going to be joining the Impact Wrestling fray. Well, some family drama. There's been a lot of Alberto Del Rio drama as of late, as he got into a bit of a fight. Well, he got into a couple of fights. <laughs> And then got into ultimately a fight with his brother in Austria, ended up jailed for the fight, yet was then released for the fight. Alberto Del Rio and his new girlfriend, Paige, there's just been drama they following them all over the world. They got engaged. Congratulations. We saw that. Didn't that happen at a truck stop? Or a... <coughs> yeah, but now it happened officially. She's in the ring now. Is it at a, a big bed? Well, she proposed to him, but now he proposed to her with a, with a beautiful In ring. the ring in Mexico, she proposed. Or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. But, I thought but, it was but, at uh, But from big what boy. I understand, the fight in Austria, him and his brother beat up some dude. Then when they got questioned at the police station, they both implicated each other, and they started fighting each other. Was it on Facebook brothers. Live? No. But that's... That's amazing how that happens, isn't it? It's the stupidity of today's society. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's let's commit a felony, kidnap somebody, and do a hate crime, and put it all over all Facebook, Facebook or Snapchat for twenty minutes plus. Idiot. Uh, Todd Grisham, ladies and gentlemen, former WWE commentator, also formerly of the uh, ESPN Network, is now joining the Ultimate Fighting Championship. As you know, uh, the uh, Mike Goldberg, pri primary broadcast guy for uh, play by play guy, rather for UFC, Mark Goldberg departed the company after the UFC 207 event. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. But uh, Todd Grisham, always a good hand in WWE. Now he's going to be in UFC. Debuts uh, during very, the Fox Sports it's broadcast. Very interesting. It is. Now, for those of you that don't know, UFC is now part of a billion dollar conglomerate. They were sold for three, four billion dollars. And uh, this company just wants to see more money. So I don't know if that's they why some, some of these people stars. are leaving. They need some more stars. They've been shotgunning a lot of things and they don't have much of a bench really when you look no, deep down into things. Uh, so it'll be interesting what happens over the next few weeks with uh, UFC. But welcome addition in Todd Grisham. WrestleMania 34 is rumored to be announced soon for the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans, Louisiana, where the 30th edition of WrestleMania took place, which is one of the most historic WrestleManias of all time because a moment that probably will never happen again, it had never happened before. Three icons in the ring at the same time to start the show, Hogan, Austin, and The Rock. And the Rock all in the ring at the same time. WrestleMania back to New Orleans in 2018. That is the rumor. No official announcement's it's, been made it's yet. It's going to be announced. I've, a Superdome. I've, I've, <laughs> talked, I've talked to people that know people that are the people down there. The people you talk to on Bourbon Street don't know nothing. No, 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 no. But these people do. They, hey, and by the way, those, Cal can Was it that place with the feet that swing out? The one right next to it. <clears throat> with the blue shoes. Cal is very excited about Bourbon Street. David Hero, Cal is, um, I. we need to have a conversation about Cal's role at WrestleMania 34 off air. It'll be for, fine. For the, for the, we have to protect the sanctity of He's Cal. He's almost six feet tall already. He'll be fine. <laughs> they don't check nothing down in New Orleans, you know. He'll be even better. Anyways, uh, Ring of Honor news, folks. Adam Cole defeated Kyle O'Reilly to become the new Ring of Honor champion at Wrestle Kingdom 11. That occurred just a couple of days ago. Now, O'Reilly is rumored to be gone from Ring of Honor as he has yet to re-sign with the company after his contract expiring on December 31st. Now, he had always planned to participate and seemingly drop the title back to Adam Cole in this event, Wrestle, King Wrestle Kingdom 11. Um, but he is, uh, well, no longer champion and seemingly gone from the company. What next for Kyle O'Reilly in Europe? NXT. There's no doubt. He'd be great for it. A great, amazing star who really rose very quickly Look in Ring of Honor wrestling. Look at all the guys that have left Ring of Honor to go mm -hmm. to NXT. Yeah. Steve Carino. Roderick Strong. Yeah. Absolutely. Michael Elgin, also gone from uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling. However, he is going to be spending more time in Japan with New Japan. Don't forget, Ring of Honor returns to Milwaukee on April 28th. And as Linda told us earlier, tickets are available now. That is this week's hot news, which is brought to you by Loot Suite, uh, Loot Crate, rather, dot com slash PWR. Go to LootCrate.com slash PWR, get 10% off your WWE Loot Crate box. Now, tomorrow on Feedback Friday, we're going to be unboxing this month's box of what we received from Loot Crate. So you can be a part of it by going to LootCrate.com slash PWR to save 10% off.
With that, let's go to a new segment, David Hero. It is the three count. You know, like the one, two, three kid. Oh, three topics. Is three the... topics. We get a minute each to talk about it. Our floor director is going to give us a minute once once the bell rings, if you will, okay. for each subject. So are you ready for this quick Absolutely, fire segment yes. before we go into yes. DHS? Yes. All right, David Hero, number one. Ronda Rousey loses at UFC 207. She does so very swiftly, very quickly. What next for Ronda Rousey? And go. Everyone is saying she needs to go to WWE. I think her stock has been hurt. By this loss? By the last two losses. She oh, yeah. Been, she has been demolished in the last two losses. She is no longer that box office draw. She took time off to come back better than ever. The vignettes, all the not participating in the press conferences, all of that led to a pretty handedly uh, decisive loss. So now if you have her come into WWE and goes to WrestleMania and defeats one of the top divas after she just got killed by two other women. Did Brock Lesnar lose good. or win his last couple of fights in UFC before coming back to WWE? I think he, he lost. lost, but it's completely different. He had the diverticulosis and all that. Yes. She has no excuse, if you will. Right. Do you want to see Rousey in WWE? Of course I do. Will we see Rousey in WWE? There's no doubt. I just don't want her to come in and they give her everything right away. I think they might, though. But with that, time is up on that subject. Next subject here in this week's three count, number two, Run Undertaker and Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels are back in WWE on Raw on Monday night. From New Orleans. From New Orleans. Yeah. What's their role? Maybe to announce WrestleMania 34? God, sometimes you're, you're so, so, when you bring it, you bring it. When it's on, you on. When you think, it happens when for I like 18 think. seconds it an does. episode. That's it's very, it. very bizarre. I, it, it is very short term. But you also got to figure, Taker is a SmackDown guy. Well, is he? He was drafted to SmackDown. Was he really? Yes, he was. I don't recall that. Mm -hmm. I thought he was outside of the draft. But either way, both men are going to be on Raw. No Monday Night Football anymore. Uh, no real huge competition from that, especially on Monday nights. They're bringing the big names in. Now, Undertaker are. was on SmackDown, 900th episode a couple of weeks ago. Shawn Michaels, when he comes back, not much really happens, to be no. honest with you. No, no, no. Undertaker could be substantial because... In just a few weeks, that sign's going to be up again in the arenas about WrestleMania. and uh, It'll be about the Rumble. One's got to expect that perhaps The Undertaker is going to make that announcement soon or make that challenge or be challenged soon for WrestleMania. He wants John Cena. you got to give him John Cena. And number three, ladies and gentlemen, two names rumored for this year's WWE Hall of Fame taking place in Orlando. The first one, David Hero, Diamond Dallas Page. Absolutely well-deserved. He is one of the guys from the Monday Night War era that was a top guy, a top Absolutely. draw, multi-time champion, and he was the true good guy yeah. besides Sting Absolutely. in that company. Mm -hmm. Avoided the efforts of the NWO to have him join and did so in quite loud fashion, but mm -hmm. the other name is a man who is unfortunately no longer with us, who spent his last days in WCW as well, Ravishing Rick Rude. There's no, Ravishing Rick Rude started his career in Florida. Mm -hmm. He needs to go in the Hall of Fame. Ah, One of yeah, the best sure, of all time. Uh, what is it? Uh, Florida Championship, Championship Wrestling. Championship Wrestling from Florida or Florida Championship Wrestling? Either or. Championship Wrestling from Florida. They, they, uh, yeah. Ravishing Rick Rude needs to be in the Hall of Fame. There's no doubt. DDP, Ravishing Rick Rude. We're going to start getting those announcements in a few weeks, but these seem a bit early, David Hero. No, it's always in January. Nothing's they official say, yet, no. but uh, usually it's after the Rumble we start talking about the uh, the Hall of Fame. But that is this week's three count. Real good, David Hero. You we came in under time on each of those. But let's see how you do. do in this week's DWHS. It is a segment by which David Hero, at the end, has spoken. This is the best time of year for wrestling because you have two companies. You have two. WWE gearing up for WrestleMania, building towards the Rumble going to WrestleMania, and now TNA Impact Wrestling with brand new ownership, trying to move the needle, try to get people tuned into their products. We can see both companies improving, changing things up, being more creative, introducing more new stars, because at the end of the day, it's about selling tickets and those seats, and they got some big venues to fill. If TNA is gonna be going on the road, and if they're gonna have their TV tapings. Big venues where? I'm not saying TNA has big oh, venues. Oh, big, I get yeah. it. But if TNA is going to have more TV during WrestleMania weekend, they have to. Both companies are going to be building and making bigger stars. There's going to be a war between the two on TNA's part. WWE is going to keep going forward, but TNA is going to want to steal some of the momentum and some of the WrestleMania exposure. And with that, David Hero has spoken. If Anthem Sports Entertainment, the new parent company of TNA, Impact Ventures, Impact Wrestling, does one thing, then they already have a chance and they would have a chance and a leg up over everything that the previous TNA Impact Wrestling did. If they do one thing, David Hero, this thing called marketing. 
yeah. then they're already a step ahead. It'll be an interesting weekend for WrestleMania in Orlando. I was talking to um, some people in the industry uh, uh, today, and it, we were discussing just how many options there are of things to do in Orlando, Florida on oh, WrestleMania weekend. With the exception of one night, on April 1st, Saturday night, after NXT, the only party in town is the Shenanigans VIP party. We heard about it earlier, but tickets are flying for that, ladies and gentlemen, and you can get yours right now at pwrshow.com. So for all of that and all that we've talked about, thank you so much for joining us. I want to remind you, be a part of Feedback Friday coming tomorrow here to Fight TV and YouTube by simply commenting on tonight's episode. We pick the best and most constructive and most well-stated and uh, typed comments to share and be a part so not of many. Feedback Friday. All you have to do is comment here on YouTube and we will select one of your comments. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter. You see our names on the screen all throughout the episode at Damian Nelson and at David Hero. Don't forget at Linda K22. For until next time, for that one, this is Damian Nelson th saying thank you so much for joining us here on the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime.